In this video, we're going to be learning how to return arrays from functions in C. So this is actually not a straightforward exercise. So uh, we'll be going over it very slowly just to look at every single way of doing it. And then we're going to identify the best way of doing it and why. So first of all, let's look at how not to do it. This is uh, an example that I had found online. Someone was trying to return uh, an array from a function. and what they were doing here actually includes three mistakes. If you can identify them, take the time to actually just look at it and see if you can identify these three mistakes. So first of all, they were trying to return an array from a function. This you cannot do in C because arrays are not considered first class citizens in C. Second, is that they are trying to return, and this is very dangerous, you have to be careful when you write code, they're trying to return a local variable, something that's allocated on the stack. So this is, here we're defining a local variable that's allocated on the stack. They're trying to return that from a function. And you'll probably get the warning from a compiler. So this is the second mistake. So first we said returning an array, an array from a function. And the second we said returning a local variable from a function. And third, the third problem we have here is that we're trying to assign uh, something to an array in this main function. And this you cannot do in C because uh, arrays are not modifiable L values. So if, you, if you're interested, you could actually look into what are L values and R values in C and C++. It's a really interesting read. But essentially, all you need to know is that you cannot assign anything to arrays. You can't modify the array A once you declare it. So these are the three things that we're doing wrong here. And so we see that this is an incorrect way of doing it. And you'll actually, you won't be able to compile this code. And we'll see that in the second part of this video. Uh, this is also another attempt at returning uh, a local variable. This is a local uh, buffer or, or array of characters and we're trying to return it. We're trying to return this array from this function and of course you can't do that uh, because this is allocated on the stack. This is a local variable and then you can't return an array from a function. So the question remains how, we, how do we return an array from a function in C? What we're going to do in this video, we're going to look at six possible solutions of doing this, and we're going to identify the best way of doing it at the end. The first way you can do it, and this only works for strings, and actually simple strings, so strings that are non-constructed, so strings whose contents you don't actually calculate, so these are called string literals, um, this solution would work if what you can do is you could just return a string literal from a function and that would be perfectly fine. So in this case, this is this could work as an array of characters and you would return it from your function and this actually this snippet of code would work. And if you call that function, you would be able to get this return string and it won't be overwritten. Um, this is a very simple solution. This is the advantage of this first solution. However, it does have quite a few disadvantages. First of all, it only works for strings, so you won't be able to use that for an integer arrays or anything else. Um, uh, next thing is that you can't calculate the contents of the string. You have to. You can only return a string literal. You can't really calculate its contents, and then. Um, one of the problems that could happen here is that some compilers or some machines, what they do is that they store string literals in uh, a read-only memory region. So if the caller calls such a function and then gets that string and tries to modify it later on, then you'll, they'll run into trouble. So uh, this is the first solution. It's the simplest, but doesn't offer us a lot of flexibility. Another way you could return an array from a function is by defining and using a global array. So in this case, we're uh, defining a global array of characters of size 100, and then using that array uh, in this function, storing something inside of it, and then returning it from that function. 
we're returning a pointer to it. So in this case, uh, we're addressing the problem of not being able to calculate the contents of that array. In the first uh, solution, we said we could only return simple strings. In this case, we could actually uh, um, create a string, um, calculate it, call functions to construct the string, and then store it in global array, and then return it from that global array. So the contents can be calculated. However, we also have a few problems here. Now that it's a global array, anyone could modify that global array. And, and this is a big problem to us. Um, second of all, this global array, every time a caller calls this function, this global array will be overwritten. So the previous caller will lose the contents of that global array that was returned to it unless they make a copy of the return value. So that's also a disadvantage. And finally, uh, if, if your array, if your global array is very large in size, maybe because you don't know what you're going to be storing in it, uh, so you make it really, really large to accommodate the largest string or how, whatever it is that you're storing in it, then this could be really wasteful. So, of course, this second solution solves one issue for us, but introduces other problems. Next solution we're going to look at is using a static array. So if you've seen one of the videos we had, uh, we were talking about how to declare a local variable static and the implications of such a declaration. And uh, we said that this static array would be initialized once, and then it would preserve its value across the calls to that function. So in this case, what you're doing is that you're defining the static array, and then you're storing some contents in it, so I put three dots right here, and then you're returning a pointer to that static array to the caller of this function. And, the call, and, and since this is a static array, it's not going to be stored on the stack, but rather it's going to be stored in the data segment of the process. So it's going to be statically allocated, and you won't lose its value. So the caller will actually be able to pull out its value even though it's outside this function. So this is no longer local to this function because we declared it static. The difference between this function, uh, this solution and the previous one is that now only the callers to this function who will receive a pointer to the static array will be able to modify the static array, not anyone. So this is unlike the previous solution we saw earlier where we were dealing with a global array, where anyone, anywhere could have modified that global array, even someone outside the file. But, but this solution also has some disadvantages. We are still dealing with the problem of this static array being modified or over in the next time someone calls this function. So we have to store it once after we call it. And finally, we're also dealing with the large uh, buffers can be wasteful. So if you don't really know how large will the contents be inside of this array, um, you're going to have to allocate a really large array and this could be really wasteful. So we're still on the lookout for the best solution to this problem, how to return an array from a function in C. Another possible solution is to allocate memory explicitly to hold the array. So Instead of allocating the, uh, the array onto the stack or to statically allocate the array, what you're going to do is you're going to dynamically allocate the array. And you're going to do that every time someone requests that array from, a fun from your function. So you're going to use malloc or calloc or any of the equivalents to allocate memory on the heap this time. So this is dynamic allocation. And then you're going to return a pointer to that array. And basically, you're going to be filling that region in memory that you've allocated. You're going to be filling it with whatever you want to put of the contents of your array. And then you're going to return a pointer to the beginning of that array. And then the caller will essentially receive the array that they would have requested. So w the advantage of the solution is that Every invocation of that function, every time someone calls this function, then this will result in a new buffer being created. And that buffer will not be overwritten by the next caller to the function, unlike the other solutions we were looking at. So this is the main advantage of the solution. But of course, this solution also has some drawbacks, or challenges rather, 
the main one of which is the fact that you're going to have to deal with memory management. You're no longer statically allocating your memory. What you're doing here is you're dynamically allocating your memory. So you're going to have to manage your, the memory yourself. And this means that you could have you could face some issues like the following. You could start freeing memory while it's still being used. Uh, or in this case, as we're going to see right here, you could forget to free memory that is no longer in use and this results in memory leaks so in this case this is actually one thing that this function suffers from you are allocating the memory right here inside this function and then returning a pointer to it to the caller of this function but then the caller will have to make sure to free that memory once they're done with it but you can't really guarantee that by just writing this function. So this is a challenge. And we're going to see how to address that in the next solution. In this solution, we improve on the previous one. And uh, we continue allocating memory dynamically. But now what we do is that we let the caller do this allocation and freeing. So you are delegating the task of allocating memory and freeing that memory to the caller and all that your function will do is calculate the contents of the array and then return it. Now in this case since the memory is being allocated for us by the caller then we're going to expect the caller to give us the size of the memory that was allocated and a pointer to the memory or the start of the memory. So in this case we're giving that function pointer to the buffer and the size and what this function will do is that it will fill that buffer with the contents of the array that it would have calculated making sure that it doesn't allocate or doesn't fill more than the allocated size. So it does not exceed whatever was allocated in that memory segment and then the caller will basically just use that pointer to that memory that was modified by this function and then carry on with whatever it was doing. So this is the best solution and this is the one that is used in the industry or, or uh, to write industry code. It simplifies memory manager because now the same agent or the same the caller in this case is doing the the allocation of memory and the freeing of memory. So you're delegating this memory management to the same agent and this of course simplifies matters unlike the previous solution where you were allocating memory inside the function and then expecting the caller to free it which they might not do. And then what you're also doing, and this is a, a subtle advantage, you are freeing the return value right here, which you can use for uh, for a status code, you know, like a return code from your function. If, if it faced any errors, if there was anything that went wrong, you could return it in, in a return value right here. So maybe an int, and then uh, the caller would basically just check that int before doing any process, any further processing. So this is probably the best solution to approach this problem, to return an array from a function. But it's also worth mentioning this final solution, which you may find useful in uh, some of your code, which is to wrap your array in a struct and then return that struct. Um, this will only work for fixed size arrays. So you can't have, like in the previous case, where we were dynamically allocating memory for that array based on the needs. In this case, you cannot do that. It has to be, you have to know the size of your array in advance, like the first solutions we were looking at. And uh, it will also be costly for really large arrays because you're going to be doing that on the stack. And this is how you do it. So you define a struct, and then inside of it, the member will be an array of a particular size. So in that, inside that struct, we have an array of, that, of, of, a, of a given size. In this case, it's 100. And then from your function, what you're going to do, the return value of that function will be the struct which wraps your array. And, and this is uh, perfectly legal in C. So you would define uh, your struct, which would be wrapping your array, and then store some contents in that array, the buffer in this case, and this is how you would access that buffer, store something in your buffer, and then return that struct to the caller, and the caller will store, will store that return value into a struct of their own. So you're allocating this on the stack, 
and you are returning it from the function and the caller will receive it and they'll be able to to store it in their own struct data D, for example, that they would have created. This is similar to how you would return an int, for example. If you had uh, you wanted to return an integer which was 5, for example, you could just say int x is equal to 5 and then return x from your function and then make your function return an int and this will be perfectly legal. This is allocated on the stack. You would return x, which is the value 5, and on the stack there would be a space reserved for that return value and and uh, this works perfectly fine you're all accustomed to doing this well in this case it's also the same thing instead of being if instead of, of of saving space for only an integer in this case you will save enough space to accommodate your struct which would wrap this array so this could be a really big uh, a space that's saved for your struct so you have to be careful with this if we're dealing with really large arrays. And people are very skeptical of this solution. So it's not a really recommended solution, but it's a very viable one.